Okay, so today I'm going to um, show you kind of how I did this animation, which it's basically the idea is that I'm sort of going for the sort of aesthetic you see on a show like Futurama. Um, I added a filter to make him sit in the background better. but So all I wanted to do today is just show the steps I went through um, to achieve that aesthetic. I really like the, um, oops, let's go to actual pixel size. Yeah, if you look at the lines, you can see the, the quality of the lines. It, it kind of looks like scanned pencil art. So anyway, how are we gonna do that? Well, let's create a new scene. So the first thing is I'm using the um, my paint brushes as my default. So when I when I just start drawing, the default layer that's created for me is a raster layer. So if I go ahead and I've, I've set up a, a my paint brush that's just like a blue pencil as you can see. So let's just uh, block in this character. All right. All right so we'll We'll just use that sort of matte groaning kind of Simpsons or, as I said, Futurama type of thing going on. Okay. All right. Um, I wonder if the, the H key, I've got the H key map to flip the canvas. So at least I can see. what I've got. Okay, so um, okay, so the first step is to just get things measured up and and blocked in. Okay, um, now I'm going to go ahead and save this, save all, and we'll call this uh, Future Amish 3. And by the way, since we're calling it Future Amish, I'm going to go ahead and give this guy a beard like an Amish guy. Okay, so obviously this is not a, um, a finished animation. Uh, you know, I'm just doing the head. I'm not gonna block in the body or all that. So <clears throat> it's just for illustration purposes. So anyway, I'm gonna go over here to my column settings and I'm gonna go ahead and lower the opacity of that column to 28, somewhere in the 20 to 30 range. And now I'm just going to start drawing over this, uh, but I'm going to use, and I'm still going to use the, the My Paint brushes because the default pencil, um, I just really like the look of it. It's got a good aesthetic. Now I'm zoomed in like crazy here so that I can be reasonably, actually I'm going to do that over again, so I can be reasonably accurate on drawing the circles. Okay, and one, one thing I'm also not going to do here is um, break the character up into pieces in a way that you might if you were trying to do a more complete and correct animation, you know, for a show. So, and by the way, it won't be long here, people, before the stuff that I'm posting is, is going to be more... Um, relevant to an actual anime production as opposed to just you know sort of all these tests that I do but it's been a good it's been a good year um, working with Blender and Krita and obviously here at OpenTunes in order to sort of develop a workflow that I think I'm happy with and will allow us to forge ahead with anime production uh, you know, July 1st was kind of go time for me to get that project moving forward. You know, quit preparing to do it and, you know, let's go ahead and do it kind of thing. So that's what I'm, that's kind of what I'm about at this point. All right. And now I think I'll go ahead and, uh, I don't like the way that lined up. 
right? I'm gonna go ahead and add some globby little eyebrows. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just turn the underlying layer off. So you, you can see that, that looks pretty good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go, uh, sorry, sometimes my tablet acts funky. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my, <laughs> one more time, okay, I'll click down and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, it did, okay, so I'm gonna go to my cleanup settings. I'm just gonna click clean up, boom, okay. And normally I would turn uh, down the contrast, but in this case, I'm gonna leave it as it is, which means my lines are gonna come out a little blacker, a little darker than, um, than what you see here. But the reason nothing seemed to happen just now is because I didn't have the level selected. So now that I've selected the level, if I hit clean up, the dialog will open. And uh, overwriting, yeah, let's, normally you wouldn't see this, but this is because I, I already did an earlier project. So I'm gonna hit clean up and you'll see what happens. So now, as you can see, the lines are darker, but the basic quality of those lines is the same as that, uh, as the my paintbrushes gave me. And as I mentioned, you know, it's sort of an aesthetic that looks kind of like scanned pencil art to me. Okay, so now there's kind of a couple things here that appear to have gone wrong. This level palette should not be showing my paintbrushes now because when I did the cleanup, this level was converted from a raster level to a tunes raster level. So this is actually, in fact, if I were to start drawing, yeah, see, it's actually not doing anything. So basically, this is one of OpenTune's kind of bugs. The, the, that's the bad news. But the good news is what I, what I do find is, with very few exceptions, if I kill OpenTune's and reopen it whenever it starts acting funny, it comes back, uh, it's, it you know, goes back to behaving normally once I reopen it, so, you know doesn't come up too often. Like if you hit the S key to select an area of your um, drawing, and in other words like this, if I hit the S key and I were gonna move some things around or whatever, um, it is normally the case that after doing that, if I start drawing, there will be a really, really bad lag. Let's see if there is. Yeah, actually that doesn't seem to be. I'm gonna turn the smoothing down and see. No, I'm not getting the lag this time, but I often do. So anyway, when I re-clicked on the level, you can see that I've got this big palette now. Lots and lots of colors. Well, that's because when I did the cleanup, it went ahead and converted it to a tunes raster level and then added uh, a bazillion colors. So now, this is kind of cool because the first thing I'm gonna do is grab this color and I'm gonna change this setting to auto paint for lines. That way I can use the red for um, shadows. Okay, so I'm gonna take my B key and go ahead and put in some shadow areas wherever you want. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the smoothing back up. You'll actually find that the, the, the tunes raster let me redo this one. The Tunes Raster brushes are pretty nice, actually, to work with. Okay, and I think I wanna go ahead and make that a shadow area. So just, you know, it's kinda like you've probably seen if you watch YouTube videos about, you know, real world anime production or something. This is kinda what they do. They they sort of block in where they want shadow areas to, to lie. So now, as usual, save early, save often. Okay, so now what we can do is um, we're in freehand area mode. I don't want to be in freehand mode. I want to be in normal mode. In freehand mode to do fills, you would actually um, draw a lasso around the area you want to fill, which is very useful in a lot of circumstances, but for right now, I don't really need to do it that way. So what I'm going to do is let's do skin first. So we'll just pick that for the um, normal area and then then you got your shadow areas so okay so now it can go in because we're not making this the Simpsons 
go ahead and change the flesh tone to a normal, a little more normal flesh tone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this color and hit the R key to sample this flesh tone. Open this up and just make it a little bit darker. Okay, so there you go. All right, so now I'm going to kind of do the same thing in the eyes. Just use these two colors. All right. So this is an example where using freehand mode makes sense because you can see, if you look real close, you can see some gap areas that didn't get filled. So let me go ahead and undo that and switch it to freehand mode and then do it this, oops, freehand, not rectangular. Okay, so now if I grab this, it should fill just what I want like so. And then I grab this color and fill this. And you can see you, when you do freehand mode, you don't get the little problems in the corners. And by the way, right now I'm going to go ahead and fix that area right there as well. So the various um, types of fill tools are, are definitely quite useful. So now let's make his eyes white. And let's sample white and then make the shadow color a little bit darker and we could pick it apart obviously you've got these areas like here and here that could actually be touched up um, you know I'm not gonna get too anal about that today since this is again kind of for demonstration purposes now I'm gonna zoom back out and it looks to me like open tunes is getting a little bit um, stiff you might say it's starting to act like it's bogging down like when I tried to draw a line see what happened nothing happens okay so I'm gonna go ahead and I already saved it so I'm gonna discard the changes and quit anyway hopefully I won't lose anything I think I did that correctly I saved the project and then went back and um, didn't save it after doing the the little line test to see if it was bogging down so anyway let's open it back up and I think we're okay so now when I grab this column. Um, I'm going to give this guy, I'm going to use the same color for his eyes uh, on his hair. So let's go ahead and since we're in freehand mode, we'll go ahead and fill this. Now it doesn't look like it was filled because uh, obviously it's white, right? So now if I do this, let's see. Okay, that's not going to work. It worked there. So I guess I need to redo my guideline. And here's another way to do shadows. You don't necessarily have to use like the red color like I did with auto paint for lines. You can just use the actual color that you want to use for your fills. I mean for, the, for your shadows to draw the border lines. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now we'll do this. Okay, and so the only thing that's a little fouled up would be his beard. So let's just fix that by drawing some cleanup lines right through here and then I'm gonna go ahead and also draw sort of a shadow line here and then let's see if that did the trick I'm gonna go back to normal mode yep that looks good and then that looks good okay so the only other thing would be probably his tongue which probably should not be that bright okay so backing off here file uh, let's save all. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, what I was saying about the scanning earlier, or not scanning, but the cleanup, is you can always... It, I didn't reduce the contrast to make the color of this outline sort of match my earlier pencil lines, but that's okay because I can always go in here and just adjust, you know, adjust this, make it a little more gray, um, and maybe even give it a little bit of tonality like like so all right so again always save early save often and then if you really wanted to animate this guy um, you could you I would suggest using the um, uh, the plastic tool and I'm not gonna do that now because we've been going here for about almost 15 minutes so but the main point here was how to sort of get that aesthetic of you know your Matt Groening type cartoons and the way I do it, again, is by uh, using the, the uh, my paintbrushes. 
pencil mode and then trace over it, do a cleanup. That's here on the scan and cleanup, which turns it from a raster level to a tunes raster level, at which point you can do all your, your filling. And it comes out looking pretty nice. Um, the one I did earlier, I'll go ahead and load up. Let's see if I can do it here. Yeah, the one that the one that was actually an Amish looking guy. I don't know. I can't remember if I animated anything. I didn't. But <laughs> so same idea. You know, I'm just it's just doing it a few times to sort of get a feel for the workflow so that you're doing the right things in the right order, you might say. With this one, which was the first one I did, I actually created a sub X sheet. And if I go down into it, you can see the um, the mesh and I went ahead and animated that and then resequenced it so that so that you can get this nice def deformation um, of the guy's face so this should get cached and then it will play back at 24 frames a second while I take a drink of my coffee and here we go Boom. Yeah, see, so that's actually not very good animation, but <laughs> at least everything works. So anyway, that's it for today. Uh, again, hopefully in the next couple days, the stuff that I'm going to be posting is going to actually relate to a real world uh, anime production in process. So looking forward to that. And until next time, see ya.